Okay, so let me get started here. It says the accompanying figure shows a single turn rectangular loop uh, or rectangular coil that has a, uh, okay, resistance. This seems significant, so I'm gonna assign in a letter some resistance. The magnetic field at all points inside the coil varies according to, so it doesn't say it's a uniform magnetic field, but I'm gonna assume it because it appears uniform. So I have a magnetic field that's going into the screen and um, it, it looks uniform, so I'm gonna assume it's uniform, but it's a time varying magnetic field which is necessary to induce voltage according to Faraday's law. And they give you the numbers for that param these parameters. Uh, it's asking what is the magnitude of the current induced in the coil at these different times. So, and so analytically the expression will be the same. These are just uh, different numbers. And uh, so looking at the question, the approach should be, when you consider Faraday's law, what Faraday's law gives you, gives you is this. It gives you the induced voltage. If you know the rate of change of magnetic flux, the induced voltage is equal to minus of the rate of change of magnetic flux. So it gives you a voltage directly. It doesn't give you the current directly. This is a, some um, easy to miss or forget because we talk about induced current so much. Lenz's law even refers directly to induced current. And what you have to remember is that whenever you want to get to current, you have to go through the step of Ohm's law. That's why they have to give you the resistance. So after we get the induced voltage, will be calculating the induced current using Ohm's law, the voltage divided by the resistance. So, so let me get induced, ex, let me get the expression for the induced voltage. It, so I'm just gonna go through this. And I, I will just, uh, especially since the question isn't even asking us for the direction of magnet, direction of current, I'm just gonna be dealing with the absolute value. And at the end of the question, I will tell you what direction the current should be flowing as a matter of application of Lenz's law. So the absolute value of induced voltage for the time being not worrying about the direction is the rate of change of magnetic flux or later on, I'm gonna do absolute value. And um, this is where you should remember the definition of magnetic flux, which is the, the, you can express it as an integral, but I want you to focus more on the conceptual things, which is that magnetic flux is the dot product between the magnetic field and the area as expressed as a vector. This uh, matters in the cases where the orientation of the area and the magnet, when the magnetic field is not perpendicular to the area. When the magnetic field is perpendicular to the area, then the area, area is a vector. It is the, so this is, uh, area is a vector points in the direction of the no, surface normal. So when the magnetic field is perpendicular, that means they are actually parallel or anti-parallel. Uh, so, so this is uh, how I want you to think of it as a starting point. And depending on the question, sometimes the magnetic field strength varies over the surface area. Then you have to think of, okay, then I have to express this as uh, some infinitesimal contribution to flux for infinitesimal area, and then you have to integrate over that. For this question, you don't need the complication because it's a uniform magnetic field. I can say, well, just B times A. The area of a rectangle is, uh, let me give these letters. So let me call this width, call this height, and the the dot product here will give me, especially when I'm doing the absolute value thing that I'm gonna do later. It's just the magnetic field, B, 
expression for B is given there times the area with times the height. No, no need to make it complicated. So when we imagine taking derivative with respect to time, I need to think through which of these quantities depend on time. Width and height don't. What does depend on time is the magnetic field. So when I take the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time, it's gonna be the area times the derivative of magnetic field. So I just need to do this derivative. It doesn't seem that hard. It's uh, exponential. Hopefully you remember the derivative formulas uh, from your calculus classes. Those are one, some of the things that you should have memorized and never forget as long as you are an engineer and or scientist. So let me write down derivative of um, B naught, that's a constant, times exponential of minus alpha times T. So here I have to use a chain rule. So um, using chain rule, I take the derivative of side first, exponential just returns the same thing. And then I have to take the derivative of the inside, which will give me a factor of minus alpha. So when I finish doing that, this is the result I get, the area times magnetic P naught and uh, times the factor that comes out from the derivative, or let me do it in order, um, the derivative of the outside, which will just give me the exponential back, let's say exact same exponential, times the derivative of the inside with respect to time. So since T is linear, it's just gonna, be, derivative of this is just gonna be minus alpha. So minus alpha. Yeah, that's why I gave myself a reminder. I'm gonna be taking the absolute value just at every step. <laughs> I don't wanna worry about science here. So induced voltage is gonna be WH times B naught times alpha times E to the minus alpha T. So this is the formula to which you just uh, plug in the numbers. You should uh, uh, check the units to make sure the units work out. This combination here gives you Tesla per second, which is what you'd expect for rate of change of magnetic field. And when you plug in the numbers into this combination here, uh, alpha is you know, inverse a second, T is given in seconds. So they cancel out, uh, the units cancel out. So you get a unitless quantity that's going in as an uh, argument of exponential function, which is what you should expect for every special function. And the WNH, you know, convert centimeters to meters so that you're dealing with the basic SI units. So that's it, uh, doing A, B, C, it's just a number exercise. I'll just uh, <laughs> tell you what to expect. So when T is very small, when T is equal to zero, then this quantity here becomes approximately one. You know, E raised to the power of zero is one. So when T is small, that's when this is actually gonna be the largest. So the amount of voltage, oh wait, 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 sorry, that's the, voltage for the current, you have to go through the uh, trouble of applying this formula. So for the current, you have to say that so all this expression here, WH P naught alpha E to the minus alpha T divided by R. So at time equals zero is when this is the largest so at t equals 0 0.001, it's gonna be the largest there. At t equals 0 0.002, it's gonna be substantially smaller. And in fact, by the time it gets to t is equal to 2.0 second, it's gonna be much, much smaller because I can see that two times 300 is 600 and e raised to the power of minus 600. Oh, let me try that much. I don't know if that's gonna be zero. It could be minus uh, wait, so I'm doing this. Uh, no, wait, not that. E raised, uh, E, where's my raised to power of thing? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna type it on keyboard. E raised to power of minus, uh, sorry. 
e raised to the power of 600, and let me change the sign here, minus 600. Um, yeah, it is a very small number, 2.65 times 10 to the power of minus 261. Uh, I forget how I programmed this. It's possible if you plug in G, zero, it'll say it's correct. Um, so, you know, t equals two second with this time scale is basically, it's the equivalent of waiting for infinity. Uh, let me give that a try. See if a zero is accepted as correct. Could easily be, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and for A and B, you will have to plug in the real numbers to get the real answer. So this is a relatively simple application of Faraday's law and going through the calculation of the induced voltage and applying Ohm's law to get induced current. So in terms of the, the answers that the question asks for, that's all that's required. But I thought this would also be a good place to practice using Lenz's law. So here, the situation you have is that magnetic field is pointing into the screen. And when you look at this expression, over time, the strength of the magnetic field is decreasing. So that means as far as the change of magnetic flux goes, it's pointing out of the screen. So what Lenz's law says is that the direction of the induced current should be such that, that it opposes the change in the magnetic flux. Since change in magnetic flux is out of screen, that means you want the induced magnetic field to point into the screen. Okay, now I think there's the third version of a right-hand rule where I can, so I want the magnetic field from the induced current to, to point into the screen, which means the current should be flowing in this direction or clockwise direction. So what Lenz's law tells me is that as the magnetic field decreases, the induced current should uh, flow in this direction so that to the extent possible, the current that's induced is trying to maintain that magnetic field. So yeah, so that's the application of Lenz's law. <laughs>